Hi all, welcome uh, on our discussion today on Associate Cloud Engineer Certification with Google Cloud. Uh, with me, I have a pleasure of having Ranga, Satish and GK, and I'm your host, Amit. Welcome everybody. Glad to be cool. here, Amit. Thank you so much. So yes, you want to start about uh, Associate Cloud Engineer, how this certification um, can help someone who wants to get started with learning Google Cloud. Uh, so, so who should basically start uh, Google Cloud certification, start doing this certification? Satish, in your opinion, um, like someone, if I have already a prior experience uh, with some other cloud, is it something that I can get started with? Irrespective of whether you're coming from another cloud or whether you're starting afresh in Google Cloud, I think the associate cloud engineer is something you should attempt. Uh, it sets the foundational layer for almost everything that you do on Google Cloud. One of the interesting things I've noticed across um, not only actually working on Google Cloud, but in any of the other certifications also, there are key and core elements from the associate cloud engineer. Right? So it's important to have the strong foundation and then you can do pretty much anything. One of the other reasons why I appreciate the associate cloud engineer a lot is it's one of the, uh, you know, like the two typical ones that you start off with are the associate cloud engineer and the professional cloud architect. And the professional cloud architect is slightly high level, right? It doesn't get down to actually implement it. And I sometimes see that people who come from another cloud background, they can somehow easily crack the PCA, the professional cloud architect, because the concepts are fairly similar at that level. But when you get down to the implementation, it's going to be vastly different, right? The way these things are configured, set up. And therefore, even for a person who is moving laterally from another cloud uh, with a good, strong background there, I would strongly recommend that they do take the uh, associate cloud engineer. And of course, for any person starting afresh also, it's a good starting point, provided they are on the technical track. Right, right. So yeah, basically anybody with a background, without a background, uh, this seems to be a good starting point for anybody who wants to start learning Google Cloud. Uh, GK, what are your, you have similar opinions around it or you want to add something? Yeah. No, I totally agree with uh, Satish. So when I uh, did my certification, the first time it was, there was only uh, ACE and there was no digital cloud leader. Um, so in fact, I'm going to reveal this here. So when I took the beta exam for ACE, I failed that exam. I was so confident coming from AWS that it can be easily cracked and then I just went to the exam. So in fact, I failed. And then I realized that like exactly like what Satish said, um, unless you have practiced, you have practiced hands-on, it is tough to crack uh, ACE. And then I practiced and then uh, it was easier. But comparing to PCA, ACE, was, ACE is much easier for, for people who are coming from different cloud and who have an architectural level experience. Um, that being said, yeah, it's a very good starting point for hands-on people who want to get into Google Cloud. Uh, AC is the best way to start because it covers pretty much all the core services, hands-on firewall stuff, and then the tricky Kubernetes uh, questions. So it's it's a good way to start uh, with Google Cloud on AC. Awesome, awesome. No, I, I really appreciate you, GK, being uh, vulnerable enough and sharing your failure uh, <laughs> with, uh, with the viewers here because a lot of people look up to you, Satish, Ranga, right, for inspiration in terms of learning. And if you share such kind of things, it just gives them that extra bit of confidence that it's okay to fail and sure. just give it a try. Because a lot of learners, what I've observed is just because of the fear of failure, they do not actually attempt and keep on like procrastinating. Okay, I'll take it tomorrow, day after, next month and all. So no, really appreciate it. Yeah, just to add to that, Amit, uh, yeah, it's okay to fail, but don't take the shortcuts going by the dumps it's and all okay. that stuff. That's not mm -hmm. worth it. I mean, it's no point of taking the exam if you're going to do that. Absolutely. Ranga, your take just on that. I wanted to add on to what yes, GK please. said. You know, I, I'm actually, uh, you know, uh, 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 I'm very happy that you actually revealed this, right? Because it is not an easy exam. People assume it's going to be easy, uh, but there are key differences. And it might, it might put people in an area of complacency when it comes to say, you know, I've done this before. And when you go in there and you get shocked, either you're going to say, you know, I'm going to come back and do this better, or you're going to say this is too tough for me, and then you might walk back off, you know. And that's not a good thing to happen. So go in with the mindset that this is not easy. I need to prepare. I need to learn, which is also best for you in your Google Cloud journey. 
So, uh, GK, cool man, that you actually revealed <laughs> that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. GK and Satish, I think uh, pretty valid points on who should be doing this. I think uh, it's this is a certification which, which is meant for people who are hands-on. Right? This is not definitely a certification for somebody who does not want to be hands-on at all. So if somebody is not going to the command line at any point in time, don't worry about this certification at all. So uh, like this exam really expects you to be good at, I mean, every command there is to play with, uh, like most of the Google Cloud services. So you are expected to be hands-on by the end when you go to the exam. And that's the way, that's the reason this exam is very different from all the other. Like I, like I have about... 11 cloud certifications and this is the only certification which i have which goes so deep into all, each of the commands i mean like even like to the minutest details as to what are the options in the commands you'll have probably like a, a few questions around the specific details on the options on these specific commands as well so you are not only expected to have a high level overview of the compute storage networking database and all the other important services related to google cloud but also you need to be able to play with them from the command line so this is specifically meant for engineers and developers, I would say. That would be the kind of audience uh, who this certification is meant for. Um, and yeah, I think, GK, great that you put that out there. I mean, I think certifications journey, I think if you want to pass 100 times, you have to be ready to fail five times, right? It, 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 like You can't do 100 things without failing somewhere or, the, uh, or there. So, I mean, I've... Like if you see the entire journey of what we have been doing with this YouTube channel as well, like so many failures and that's the only way. I mean, you just take it in your stride and go forward. Thanks, GK, actually. Thank you. Awesome. So, yes, um, uh, Ranga, I think um, you're absolutely right that this is uh, not a very easy kind of certification and Google itself recommends someone at least having like six months of hands-on experience you know, working in Google Cloud and then taking up this certification. So if you are a beginner, then spend solid time in Google console and try to make yourself familiar with the services. Absolutely. So, so uh, with that uh, basic overview around who should be doing, like, let's dig deep into what are the various learning areas uh, this certification kind of tests a uh, learner's knowledge in GK, according to you, like what are the areas that uh, this exam focuses on in, in terms of cloud? Yeah, so uh, I think it covers pretty much all the core important areas. Uh, you don't have to really learn the machine learning and other stuff, but the core compute areas, that's what I, I got in my exam as well. Mainly, you know, I got questions around Kubernetes, uh, networking firewalls are the most important thing. And then the BigQuery commands and even minute commands like how do you config configure your G Cloud, G Cloud configurations. And those were also touched upon. So meaning what they were expecting in the exam is that, like you said, you a person who has experience and who has hands-on experience uh, creating the services and managing the services. So it's more like related to the AWS SysOps, I would say. Uh, I felt, in fact, SysOps was, AWS SysOps was much easier than this one. Uh, <laughs> and and, and uh, this, it was a little difficult for me as soon as I hit the submit button. I was surprised to see that I passed the exam after that. Um, so there, it, it nicely covers all the concepts. So you have to have overall operational experience of uh, working in Google Cloud. Absolutely. Great. So, so Ranga, one is operational experience, networking, security, uh, which uh, GK mentioned. Uh, anything else that you want to add on in terms of areas that this will test? Yeah, I think generally, right? So if you look at most of the clouds, you have compute, uh, yeah. you have storage, databases, and then you have networking and security, right? So yeah. these are kind of the same things that uh, this certification really focuses on. Uh, and I think there is an extra level focus on the compute area. I mean, I would say it really focuses a lot on the compute engine and also the instance groups. I mean, how do you create groups of things? Uh, like there's extra focus on app engine. Um, I would say another thing which there is extra focus on is Kubernetes engine. So GKE, uh, app engine and the compute, uh, like the basic virtual machine compute parts of it. I think those are areas uh, which are extremely focused during the exam. Other than that, obviously, uh, the databases, the security, IAM, uh, also like uh, a very, very high level architecture. Not uh, Probably it's not as deep into architecture as a PCA, but at a high level, like a uh, choice of service, like when do you go for what? I think that's 
probably some of the areas that somebody preparing for the exam can focus on. Yes, absolutely. So any any Google certification will uh, will not go like without Kubernetes, right? You will have Kubernetes questions absolutely. in it um, for sure. And yes, comparison between the services, you need to be really clear in terms of when to use Cloud Run, Cloud Function, right? In terms of data proc and all those uh, big query, big table, right? Uh, I think that is one area as well, right? Uh, Satish, uh, I think you want to add on those lines. A um, couple of things, actually. Uh, first thing is um, one key topic that uh, others probably didn't allude to too much is mm -hmm. IAM, right? So all the other ones I agree already. But yeah. IAM is something that is significantly different when it comes to public cloud, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that stretches again across all topics that you study on Google or any of the other certifications that's also requires IAM because that's essentially how you control security. Um, and that is covered well over here, right? And IAM is not easy. You need to understand roles, you need to understand policies, Absolutely. you need to understand groups, all of these things. And uh, that becomes very important. The other topic that is important is uh, billing, resource hierarchy. These are the kind of things, again, where enterprises and companies, anybody who's working on it, right? Apart from resources, you need to say, how are you going to pay for resources? How are you going to track it? Uh, so those topics also become um, very important. There are some topics that are becoming less important now. So for example, I think things like deployment manager is going to go away and is going to be more Terraform in general. Uh, yeah. And I'm in general seeing that, I don't know if this is uh, true, but at least my general, ex uh, not experience, I would say, I mean, some general, we are seem to be getting a few hints here and there that there is a shift away from App Engine as being one of the key topics and moving towards mm -hmm. more other topics like Cloud Run, Cloud Functions, right? Cloud Run yeah. especially has become like a, a superstar uh, okay. in, within Google Cloud itself. So I think those things are also getting more prominence um, recently. And of course, anything contain, container-based, like again, yeah. uh, Kubernetes, Cloud Run, all of those. Yeah. yeah. Two points to add on to what Satish is saying, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of enterprises are moving from cloud first to container first. And that's where I think there is a huge prominence for things like Cloud Run because, I mean, obviously a lot of enterprises might not be ready for the complexity of Kubernetes and for them, Cloud Run might be a great starting point if they are having a container first kind of a philosophy. Um, the second thing, I mean, the stress on IAM, uh, I think uh, is very, very important with respect to Google Cloud, especially for people who are moving from other clouds because the way IAM is structured in Google Cloud is very, very different from how IAM is in uh, like, for example, AWS, like the both the service, I mean, if you look at compute or database, the difference is not so huge. But when it comes to IAM, the way IAM structure is in uh, Google Cloud is completely different from how it is in AWS, for example. How are the terminologies the same? So they in AWS and Azure, it's IAM. You have roles, you have policies. But what a role means in AWS is completely different from what a role means in Google Cloud. What a policy means in AWS is completely different from what it means in Google Cloud. So that's one thing people who are switching from other clouds have to be really cautious about. Uh, when you switch to Google Cloud, especially from AWS, forget I am in AWS and start with a fresh mind. I mean, I had the exact same issue uh, with the policy and role. Because yeah. for me, I, I worked in the governance team in a, uh, AWS. So I was very thorough with the whole AWS security, especially on the IAM. And I feel like AWS still has the strongest IAM because the way they're structured and they want, you can have multiple segregations in one project, or rather one account. Uh, but in Google Cloud, the philosophy is totally different, right? You want to create more projects and more folders and, and sort of that way. But yeah, so the confusion was too much for me to handle, <laughs> but later on I had to prepare more to understand. And I, I think later on they have added filters also recently, right? Which was not there before. Uh, but yeah, IAM is a little tricky to prepare for uh, for ACE. That's great. Um, so I think this is one important topic which you kind of touched upon, Ranga and Satish. So what are some of the learning areas that, for example, if I'm coming from one cloud, so I'm, for example, I'm coming from an Azure background, so what are some of the learning areas which are kind of easier for me and I don't need to kind of learn afresh in Google Cloud. It's like Apple to Apple here. Um, if I want to start with Google Cloud, ACE certification. 
so i am definitely is not you have to kind of forget what you have learned but like vm compute and since like some something which is common across both which you have learned once uh, here you can just kind of skim through and quickly do this those kind of learning i mean if you look at the fundamentals of the cloud right they are yes. very very similar regions availability zones at a high level right there are yes. still differences on how regions are structured availability zones are structured and things like that it's like how like if you go to compute for example right uh, each of these will have definitely a platform as a service offering uh, like uh, and they'll have a container as a service offering they'll have like a container orchestration solution so in that sense like if you look at the databases you would have a relational database you will have a relational global database and you will have a nosql database and you will have uh, like maybe a data warehouse solution right so in that sense there are like parallels however when you go to the specific products i would say there are huge differences so i mean at a high level at a 10000 feet overview level probably like uh, the compute database like there are specific options which might be similar but when you go to the specific product again there are differences right so uh, for example bigquery is completely different from synapse analytics for example so you might i mean it's the same solution i mean uh, it's a data warehousing kind of a thing but uh, both are completely different approaches towards data warehousing so yeah at a high level the conceptually there are services which do that specific thing but when you go deep into each of the products i would say there are significant differences right right so there's nothing which you can actually kind of say it's same but you have to go through it in details um, and prepare for the certification exam yeah but if you are like if you are looking at somebody who has an experience with azure or google aws yes. moving to google cloud right mm -hmm. their experience really helps their understanding of the cloud mm -hmm. because what you want to do with the cloud remains the same how yeah. you do it might be a little different but what like in terms of building applications deploying them in terms of doing devops in terms of releasing them to production right that entire life cycle would be the same except that how you would use that would be a little different sure sure for that thank you very much uh, moving on um, so we've covered the uh, the learning areas that are there now how do i get started to prepare myself for the certification so like where can i find good courses like coursera or some other udemy these kind of websites so how do i start about preparing uh, for the certification satish uh, the associate cloud engineer is i think the one certification that is blessed with a lot of material right there are a large number of people who have created a lot of material ranga has a, a course which is popular um i know a bunch of other people antony has a course uh, this uh, you know course that are plural site every single one of them are course in uh, ace there is also a book by dan sullivan which is supposed to be the uh, official book but there are also other books right independently people have written other books too so there's no dearth of material uh, for the associate cloud engineer there's no dearth of labs quick labs is quite exhaustive when it comes to you know all the base level stuff uh, that you need to learn Uh, i myself on the awesome gcp channel uh, the associate cloud engineer question practice that was the first set of um, videos that i did on my youtube channel and it's also i think the more elaborate one where i get into a lot of uh, in depth details so in terms of material don't worry at all right there's so much more so only a question of how much are you going to cover and how much time do you have um yeah that's yep so that's good uh, so i I'm more curious to know on the one point that you mentioned that we have Dan Sullivan's uh, book, which is like the official guide. So, it is someone who is a Google employee, and and they have uh, released an official book, or how how is it official? It's like certified by Google. I wouldn't know that. I don't know the yeah. details of the contract, but I think I've, yeah. I'm fairly sure that Dan is not a, a Google employee. Okay. um it is just um i think it is a contract between the publisher uh, and google to say you know what we will brand this as your official book and okay. probably they did also a review of the book i don't know the details uh, dan by the way is a good person to talk to you know we should probably bring him on this um uh, you know uh, on the show at some point in time Perfect. so maybe it's a question that we can retain until he comes on the show sometime Yeah I think that would be wonderful Satish to have Dan here would be awesome I love his books I mean I, like the Ace book is a amazing read if you are into books if you love preparing with books 
I don't think there can be a better way to start your ACE or even the PCA book. I mean, both of them, if you know architecture, if you know Google Cloud, I mean, those are excellent books to review and get started. It, those are two, I mean, I've read a lot of certification books. I mean, I've read the AWS official guides, Azure official guides, but I would say the Google Cloud official guides are a class apart. I mean, if you are experienced with architecture, a PCA, like the certification book is not only going to help you with certification, but also in your general use of Google Cloud. I find the way it was written was awesome. But I mean, it expects you to be at a certain level. Once you are at that level, those two books are amazing books to read. So yeah, I love his books. I think all three official books uh, have been written by Dan, right? The two, I mean, I've read ACE and PCA and they are both written by Dan. Isn't there also a data engineer book by uh, Dan? I think there is. But anyway, oh, but there, in any case, okay. you know, this is a glowing endorsement of what, who, I mean, of Dan's, uh, Dan Sullivan's book. And I attended one session by him and he just came across as an extremely nice person, right? Uh, the kind of person that you'd love to hang out with, have discussions about. So pretty cool. Maybe we should, uh, you guys should get him on the show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, Ranga, you mentioned about this book. Anything else? We know you have a course in Udemy as well. So, you want to talk a little bit about other courses or what else can students kind of focus on? Um, I think, uh, like, I think Satish has touched upon uh, the material aspect, right? So, if you go to Awesome GCP website, you have tons of resources as to where you can start your preparation. So that's the yeah, best place like, to go. In terms of very crisp, like without right. uh, spending too much of a time, like bang for my buck, basically. I, if I spend, for example, 40 hours and I should be getting everything I require or something like that. No, I, I, I wouldn't advise that. Like, I don't okay. think that approach would work for a certification okay. because you are doing a certification for long-term knowledge. It's not about the paper. It's more about right. uh, like getting to know Google Cloud. And I would definitely okay. not advise somebody to do this certification within a week or so. You should take your time, learn very well, and then do the certification, right? And right. like one recommendation I would have for people is to go hands-on. This is a certification which expects you to be hands-on. So don't just watch somebody do it. Go ahead and do it yourself. So create a Google tri free career account or use Quick Labs. Use one right. of these means to go hands-on and hands-on mm -hmm. is the most important thing as far, as far as this certification is concerned. Right. That's cool. Um, GK, uh, anything else you would like to add in terms of resources yeah. that could help? So when I started preparing, um, at that time, we had uh, a Cloud Guru free account uh, at our company. So I prepared with the first course that was created by Matthias Anderson. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of him. Uh, that was a very well, I mean, it was crisp course, six hours or seven hours, uh, attaching Kubernetes course from the same A Cloud Guru. But I also met him at, at uh, reInvent. Uh, he's a very nice guy. And uh, I, I used to exchange my LinkedIn messages with him, ask a few questions. So I think like Ranga uh, said, right, the main important thing is now more than the course, whatever that's been said in the course, my preparation mode was uh, go to the course and then go to the cloud as soon as possible, free, free credits practice the exact service on the day itself as soon as I have done that. And then if possible, go to the quick labs, if, quick labs. And then if you want to do something there, do it. But more, I think doing it in uh, for AC uh, in the, in your cloud itself will be more than sufficient. You don't have to go to quick labs or subscribe for quick labs for this. So that I have a different take on the books though. I mean, I, I'm not a huge follow, follower of books because for me, I feel like they become stale very fast. So I, I strictly advise people to uh, follow the videos or uh, at least follow the main documentation of Google Cloud if they have any questions and then go through the steps in there and then practice mm -hmm. the Google Cloud. That's my uh, personal preference. Usually I'm very like I, I get bored when I'm reading books. So <laughs> um, so those are the main preparation modes that, that are important. Right. So when you say practice the Google Cloud, so how can I actually yeah. practice the Google Cloud? Yeah. Um, so let's say in a scenario like, you know, there's a scenario that we have to configure different Google Cloud configurations, right? That's what you read in, in Ranga's course or Satish's channel any, anywhere, they teach that. So what you do is you immediately go to your console where you have a credit and then get that going on. So create G Cloud configuration, configurations create, and then see list different configurations, change around different configurations, you know, have one set of settings here. How do you, actually those are important questions. Those are tricky questions that you get in exam. So rest right. of things are really easy uh, because unless you do practice once, you would not know the nuances of what failures you will see uh, while practicing. 
right so yeah, it's also remember. important to practice so that you can remember it for a long time right. because this is yeah. i mean for me like uh, if you just watch it's very very difficult to remember things especially in the that this exam basically you have to practice like how can i practice in such a way or where should i practice so that i i remember um, and and that will help me eventually to to clear the exam like are there any practical examples which kind of tells me step by step okay create this and then create that and yeah. then do a so, so where, think, where can most of this mo- most of the courses that satish was referring to all of them have i mean most of the courses are hands on right you cannot teach okay. how to use g cloud yeah. configuration so if i have a course and i'm saying i'm going to teach ace if i am going to talk about g cloud i have to show how what g cloud is what are the different commands what are the different option it provides and it's not theory right it's more a practical thing because somebody can visualize and remember right so most of these courses i would say would be hands on right maybe the architect courses would be little theoretical but at the ace level most of the courses have to be hands on because the exam is completely uh, like real time i mean it expects you to know the commands thoroughly and you cannot right. have a presentation on each of these commands and remember them right got it in fact so, just to add on to it, right, the options that you see uh, i'm sorry sadish sorry to cut you off uh, but the options that you see in the exam also you'll see only slight variance in the option i mean i hate those sort of options usually because that's like you're asking student to mug up options but unfortunately there is only slight variance so unless you exactly know the command and uh, the options that are there in the command you would not know the option so it it only gets through practice yeah, yeah go ahead satish sorry uh, just to answer the i had a view on what gk said also but just to answer the original question uh, as we previously mentioned you know in uh, other episodes the best way to start getting hands on practice is quick labs you know hands down right it's the uh, hands down best hands on uh, method at the same time i would also warn against being uh, too reliant only on quick labs because it kind of makes it easy for you which is very important right but at the same time you become complacent because you assume hey you've learned something when all you've done is essentially copy paste uh, commands uh, what i would also recommend is what gk and ranga said right now that you get your own account somehow and start a fresh right and so just copy pasting commands and running through a lab which is very useful for de- definitely especially when it comes to large volume and you want to do a lot of things you don't want to prepare everything on your own uh but start a fresh create a new projects try, try basic commands like creating a vm uh what is the different commands that uh, come as part of g cloud right g cloud compute networks create something right um and things that you assume that you've learned you realize hey actually you don't know that because i always get confused that networks is within a, a part of compute right you like usually write g cloud networks so uh, those kind of things become important in the hands on practice to do it independently on your own account right so on that i strongly agree with ranga and uh, gk but uh, also the quick labs is a great way to start and if you don't have enough time there's an existing lab just go there and quickly do it i do that all the time absolutely and to add on to satish's uh, thing about how the g cloud commands are structured i actually find going to g cloud as the best way to learn about a specific service so if i would want to learn about what are the different uh, options that are present in bigquery one of the best places you can go for example is to go to that command and quickly read through the documentation i feel it gives you a lot of options like if i have to actually go through the google cloud official documentation and understand all those options it takes a long time but if you are a techie like going th- once you can do something from a command line i find i have a list of 50 commands and all that i for example if i want to find out what all release types are there for app engine if i have to go through the documentation it will be very complex but if the same thing i would go to a command line documentation it will be very succinct and it will be a quick summary so a lot of times when i'm confused about what options are present a lot of time i look at okay go to g cloud command look at the documentation and it gives me quick reference of what you can do at a high level there also one thing i keep doing is i put it in g cloud beta interactive which means that it shows up all the options also which is much more easier than trying to remember it yourself right yeah. just say Uh, g cloud c and then it shows up compute and router cloud router whatever it is right whatever starts with c um and that is again convenient in just jogging your memory right about what is there yeah 
And most of these options also make sense. The way Google G Cloud commands are structured, if you are able to understand the high level structure of how it's organized, you can actually eliminate a lot of wrong options in the exam. So if you know how at a high level, the high level command structure is, then you can probably see, oh, this one does not match the high level command structure. And you can even eliminate those options out in the exam. It's beautifully structured. I find like the way, I mean, usually the G Cloud commands are long, but they are beautifully structured for me. The, again, you know, every prop topic that you're bringing up, I've got something to add, but I don't want to distract in terms of time. But one thing I would like to add is yesterday I started a new GitHub repo where after doing a lab, right, if it's predominantly UI based, I'm, I've created a new repo where I'm putting out the G Cloud command line commands of the same thing. Right? So I've just started again uh, because awesome. instead of going through the UI over and over and over again, if I can just get that, copy, paste, and put, uh, put that, the next time I need it, I can quickly come back and run this exercise. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this is I have to do a demo on one particular topic. There's a new uh, thing called Network Connectivity Center. And to set it up is actually quite time consuming. And you have to do it predominantly in the UI, right? It takes at least two hours to go through that whole lab. In fact, it timed out before I could finish. Uh, one of the rare cases that has ever happened. And I'm like, why am I doing this manually? You know. Uh, and so now whenever I'm trying to do a lab and if there's not a lot of G cloud commands, I'm trying to translate it so that I can make it easy for me the next time. Or when I'm teaching somebody, you know, uh, to quickly get them to a stage because that's the key part, right? All the other things might be just set up. So, uh, check out that repo. If you guys can contribute also, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. Satish, yeah. can you share the link to that repo with me? We'll add it to the uh, description. Cool. cool. Perfect. So just to summarize, what we are saying is basically set up your account in Google Cloud. We have $300 to play with. Uh, and otherwise, use Quick Labs. Use the examples that are given in the course, whichever course you take, and then try out in the those lab accounts to get yourself familiar with all the Google Cloud command. That's the best way to learn for a new learner. Perfect. Uh, moving on into the exams format. This is a, a really tricky one because a lot of uh, learners like come to me and, and ask me, oh, what is the pass percentage of this exam? How many questions uh, did you get? And for me, if I look out in the Google documentation, they never kind of tell that uh, to very openly. So, so, so if you want to share GK in terms of your experience, like how many exams usually come in that exam? So pass percentage is uh, yeah, you're right. I'm not sure what was the pass percentage uh, because yeah. they'll they'll just show pass or fail in the yeah. result. Um, but AWS usually does that pretty well. Actually, as soon as you pass or fail, they give you each section. At least previously when I took the exam, they give you each section how much you scored, what are your improvement areas and stuff. Uh, I don't remember for AC. I got something like that. I'm not sure if Ranga can Ranga and Satish can add more to that. Uh, but as far as questions are concerned, I think those questions are fixed, right? Sixty seven or 75, around that uh, is what you get in the exam. And time-wise, that should be more than uh, sufficient, Amit. Exactly. So I think, Ranga, I yeah, I think around uh, 65 questions, I think two hours, which should be more than sufficient. Um, and uh, I think f for this exam, time is not really a concern because a lot of times you either know it or you don't know it. There is no analysis that you need to know. When, the, yeah. when you see a command, if you know the right option, you know it, otherwise you don't. So there's not a lot of thought process behind it. So, But it's important to focus, right? It's important to uh, look at the options at detail because a lot of these are in-depth kind of a question. Um, sorry, I, like, I forgot the other question. In terms of the pass percentage, like does Google say anything like 75? Yeah, Google, I think one, one thing is Google Cloud does not give you, I mean, I think there's a pass percentage. I think it's around 70%. But I doubt, uh, like, uh, like it does not tell you how much percentage you got, right? So you not the exam does not at the end of the exam you don't know whether you got seventy one percent or ninety nine percent. So that you would not know. Uh, you know that you have passed or failed. So the result is given to you, but you don't know, uh, like, how well you do, did the ex, did at the yeah. exam, right? So and also, yeah. uh, I think the pass percentage get, is seventy. Hey, did you get? Uh, I think you'll get the result obviously as soon as you submit but uh, did you yeah. i think they con 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 confirmed after two weeks right that's some it was something like that when i took the exam yeah 
Three Absolutely. So you get the result immediately, but they say the result will be confirmed. Earlier. Yeah. Um, I think that's something which is standard, right? All cloud providers would have to do some check behind the background, especially for the online exams. Uh, they would want was to review the video or things like that. Yeah, which was. No, I mean, the they would do yeah. that. I don't know if they say that, but they mm -hmm. would obviously like the after the exam they have to review the video, right? I mean, they cannot just give somebody uh, a certification. Uh, like they have to review the video before doing that and. Probably this is, I don't know, I've not done any physical, like, uh, like I did not do a Google Cloud exam at a physical center, but mm. uh, I've done all my certifications online. And yeah, I think uh, this should be a standard process across all certifications. They have to, when we do it online, they have to verify it. Right. On on the um, first question that I asked, right, on the exam, nature of the exam, I think I've got a lot to talk about there, but I'll try to keep it kind of succinct, right? I don't want to get into all the details. Uh, see the Google Cloud first, it does not say you're going to get these many questions, right? There is no official number saying you're going to get exactly 50 questions or so, because it gives them the, gives them the flexibility to uh, maybe add trial questions and all of that. Like for, so for example, in every uh, exam, there will be a few questions that you're not marked on, right? So uh, they don't say specifically three, you're not marked on a specifically four, it could change. It depends on the thing. And in no Google exam do they ever specify that you're gonna get exactly this number of questions, right? But in general practice, I think we know that in the associate cloud engineer, it's around, in and around 50, if I remember right. When I took the exam, probably it was 50, maybe it's different. Some exams nowadays have up to 60 questions in the same time frame. For example, the machine learning engineer was 60, and I'm hearing now that the DevOps is also 60. But the associate cloud engineer was at 50, if I remember right, when I took the exam. The other thing is that there is, again, no official pass percentage, right? They never say this is 70% or 80%, right? They just don't. Okay. Do and... Um, it is only that result in the end. It's a binary result, yes or no. Okay? And there are reasons for doing it. The other thing uh, that uh, Google doesn't do is to give a breakup of how you fare. Uh, GK mentioned that in the Amazon exam, they said, you know, in uh, mm -hmm. storage, they got this much percentage. In something else, they got another percentage. I, I find that approach wrong. And I prefer the Google approach where they're saying, you know, we don't give you in this area, you did 80%. Because... When you have a vast number of topics, right? So for example, storage is 25 products with so many details. In 50 questions on the exam, given that you're covering so much, how many questions are you going to get in storage? Five questions. And then based on that, if you're saying you got 100% on storage, does it mean that you understand Google storage? No, not really. I mean, uh, because there's so much more left in that, right? Whereas in certain other exams, like for example, when I took the Terraform exam, Right, they give you a breakup, saying that in this topic you got some, and that is fair because a very narrow topic, and there's only so many questions, and you can spread it out, right? Across the 10 topics that you can cover in Terraform, you can say, hey, each question you got five, you got this person. It's not fair to do that when you have a large number of topics. Right? If I gave you an exam on physics with 10 questions, and I asked one question on say Newton's laws of motion, and you got that right. Does that mean you're 100% completely knowledgeable about Newton's laws of motion? The answer is no, right? So uh, uh, I'm okay with Google not giving specific percentages in specific topics because it is completely unindicative of where you stand on that, right? They can say in general, you're able to get, uh, fair, I mean, get things done on Google Cloud and that is what you need for the role, right? But you're not an expert on uh, Amazon storage Everything related to Amazon storage, just because you got 100% down. Um, I think I'll stop with that. There's a lot more detail that we can get into, but uh, I think that's a fair, I mean, just to answer the immediate question. Um, I think I mean, good. It's great learning, Satish, to hear that from you. I mean, I was like, I've <laughs> helped so many people clear certifications, but I have, I did not even think about what the past percentage is until now. I assumed it was 70% based on other cloud experiences, but I've never... Uh, thought that okay they have not even given a pass percentage and as you said like the number of questions also right i mean yeah that's pretty interesting <laughs> you get a different thing which is sometimes usually it is plus or minus two or three questions but some okay. people get 53 questions some 55 right okay. depending on the so for these questions they are running trials in the background right so if you're getting a small question people are able to answer it in a fraction of the time that you take a long question 
maybe they can add another extra question that they're not marked on but which is a mm-hmm. test for a future potential ones so uh, yeah, yeah, not sense. giving a specific number gives them a little flexibility to adjust the test to adjust the exam and improve on it over a period of time uh, i think that's a fair uh, you know that's a fair approach yeah and but what one thing i don't really like is that they don't tell you how well you did at the exam right a breakup is not necessarily needed but uh, i think some more clarity on how well i did at the total exam whether i have just passed barely or whether i have really done really really well i think that kinds of makes a difference but i don't know if uh, yeah i don't know why they are not doing it again it's yeah, not really right at least that will help uh, if a person has failed to prepare better uh, <laughs> next time <laughs> that's not thing right you know, no, but again i think probably the 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 question then goes back to they have to tell tell you a pass percentage <laughs> maybe i think yeah. it's like either you don't tell anything or exactly. you tell right. everything yeah. like aws takes exactly. the other approach and google cloud right. says okay uh, we'll tell you the result don't worry about the details to you guys since you brought it up maybe i'll <laughs> i'll pick up another topic also see there are different kinds of these tests okay there's something called i think they're norm or normalized tests and another one that is called criterion based tests so for example let us say you are trying to get into an engineering college after writing a cet right there you are normalized typically on a um, on a what do you call on a bell curve right anybody yeah. who's beyond this cut off we are going to select everybody else is off so there a gradation matters saying that you got 99.9% 99.8% right. right so when you write the cat exam those are these mm-hmm. normalized tests and there are other tests uh, and in those kind of normalized tests only a certain number can get through every year mm-hmm. into some of the engineering college but there are certain other kinds of tests called criterion based tests where it doesn't matter that you are spread out on a spectrum so for example let's say you're going for a license test the rto the regional transport office doesn't say you know we are going to take only the top 10 people through if you are good enough That's to true. drive even if a thousand or a million people come in to take their license all of you will pass if a million yeah. people come in but everybody is horrible at driving none of them pass right yeah. so uh, a gradation um, or a spectrum doesn't matter in these kind of tests where you say are you capable of driving it's not your your 99% capable of driving you're not 98% or 90% capable of driving yet but they are you yeah. capable of driving well and that is the same approach that is taken uh, when it comes to google examinations where you're saying are you capable of getting work done and there could be variations in how you do this right for example mm-hmm. i might be a more of a data expert than a networking expert so my networking score might come a little less but my data score might come up and it might be different for another person from a different background but both of them are capable of getting cloud okay. work done so uh, that is the uh, i think that is the overall goal of these kind of exams which i think google does well honestly cool no nope, absolutely i get that and i agree with that why google does it uh, thank you very much for that clear explanation satish uh, now learners also have uh, this question regarding the exam format especially when they are coming from other background where they already have some experience in the past like aws certifications as you are aware they have uh, like a console will be shown to them in, in azure for example you have to actually click on particular icon to prove that this is that service which the question is asked for or if the console will be shown where you can type the commands uh, in in some of the certification exams so what is the exam format do you actually have like hands on where they actually show console or ui where you actually have to click or is just multiple choice questions what is the exam format looks like uh, gk from your view yeah it's a straightforward multiple choice questions you know no uh, it's not like a what you call kubernetes certification exam where you have to go and type in the command to get the output back uh, so they're not, they're not going to check your uh, your skills as a as in like entering the commands or anything you don't have any interface or a form to enter there so it's a straightforward multiple choice questions um, you just have to eliminate and it it does help to eliminate the wrong answers instead of selecting the right one sometimes <laughs> that's what helped for me obviously it's a common that people follow <laughs> in multiple choice <laughs> and and uh, yes. what i suggest is especially in the multiple choice questions i think this is pretty common and and but still when you go to the exam you tend to go with the right answer and you just go to the next question but i generally i don't do that i also check the other answers other options rather 
and then eliminate them and when I, when you're confident then then i would go to the next one because i don't tend to uh, recheck everything all the answers at the end i'll just click on submit <laughs> so at first itself you it's better that you eliminate everything and then go to the next one but yeah it's only straight for multiple choice yeah right so and there's one are any they, of the google club um, satish uh, or gk like have you faced any google certification which is hands on uh, i, I doubt I, i don't think there is a google certification there, which is kind of there was a certification the called g suite right? the g, g, g suite exam did have a certain uh, hands on thing where it was not much of course it was just about going into a google document uh, like a google sheets or a google uh, uh, what's that? i mean google document right and you have to do something like so for example go into a google sheet and do a sum of all of this that is actually hands on but a smaller section right is one part of the g suite exam and that exam is i think is the exam is defunct now right i don't think they're okay. giving that g suite exam anymore so uh, none of the other other google cloud exams have a um, have a you know have content like the kubernetes exam where you actually have to do things uh, on yeah. the keep actually i remember other clouds trying it out as well like i think uh, amit was mentioning azure and i think aws also i think the system admin oh. exam i think uh, earlier version did not have that but i think one of the recent versions i'm not 100% confident but i think they are also giving it a try to oh, kind so of it's actually there now in the current version of the exam it is there i mean that's my best guess i think okay. they do have like i'm not 100% certain i remember at certain point in time i mean i do check other course creators and the changes they keep making to their courses and like i remember at certain point in time aws starting a switch from just a multiple choice based questions to kind of hands on activity based kind of a thing that will be great actually i like that kind of format to be honest with you guys absolutely i think that would be lovely yeah i think that would also ensure that somebody who's coming to the exam is even more even exactly. better prepared yeah. exactly <laughs> like and that's why i think kubernetes exam is uh, such a like a lot yes. of people who do kubernetes exam love 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 that exam because it yeah. really tests you how good at how good you are at the job yep. but i mean having said that i would say google cloud uh, certifications as they are the questions they are, like typically that they are asked are much more practical than uh, i would say some of the other cloud certifications <laughs> right again this right. is a view where you know where i think the uh, volume and the breadth of subjects become restrictive to how you conduct the exam right kubernetes is mm. one topic of course there are sub topics but when you have a Absolutely. when you have you know the, the professional cloud architect covers some 200 products right uh, how much hands on are you going to do and if even if you do hands on if you ask somebody to do a hands on you need to give them say 15 minutes half an hour or something right and how much time can you keep them for uh, you know writing these exams so uh, you having to when you create these exams right and for the uh, exam creator they having to balance all these different problems right and it's not just about a single topic whereas an exam like for example the terraform i don't mind at all if that was uh, completely hands on right where you do things and uh, get that i think it'll be way more difficult to implement it in um, exams where you have a much broader uh, set of subjects absolutely to absolutely i agree i think the context is very very important probably a certain set of questions on ace i would say would be particular like good candidates for this kind of thing but obviously not everything and i think pca yeah. would definitely not be the right choice when you'd want right. to do something like this yeah and also That's scale it's not tough like uh, satish said right it's it's impossible to scale or tough to scale yeah. exactly. there's a lot of people yeah. going to take the exam exactly so, uh, Cool. So just to summarize, what we are saying is the exam format is pretty simple. It's multiple choice questions and uh, pass marks. We don't know. You will just come to know whether you pass or fail. And the number of questions also we don't know, but we can kind of guess. It's like around fifty to fifty-five. And one tip that GK gave is the process of elimination works for him, so you can try to give it a shot. <laughs> uh, so, Sadish, what are your tips for for the certification exam to the learners? Um, the the kind of things that GK said, you no, know, there are few more that we should probably cover, but there's enough mm-hmm. of it to maybe take up in another topic, right? On the exam itself, I would say a couple of things that I say, uh, right? The exam questions. even though the format is simple the questions are sometimes tricky right they're not trying to catch you off guard but the questions are tricky right you need to be able to 
uh, understand the question, the context, the scenario, and then look at the options, right? And in answering the options, exactly what GK said, right? Eliminating reduces your chances of getting it wrong, right? If you know that two are ridiculously bad, first remove them, right? And then if you don't know among the remaining two which is right, at least take a guess with one of them, right? You've got a 50% chance of getting it right. And the other thing is always answer a question because there's no negative marking, right? So you don't you don't lose anything for, have, for having tried it, right? At best, you've just got zero, right? You don't get minus five or whatever. Uh, but uh, mostly it is this, uh, prepare well, don't be complacent, don't... Uh, don't be overconfident about this exam because um, even though it's kind of treated like a beginner exam, it requires you to know a lot, right? So study well, practice well, focus during the exam, or find out what exactly the question is asking. And usually uh, the questions are written in such a way so as not to catch you uh, off guard, right? Um, so they will all be reasonably good options, especially in recent years. I think it's getting to uh, getting even better, the options that are, are given. Uh, and that's basically it, right? Get a good night's sleep, uh, read the question well, focus, and then uh, respond. Right. Langa, you want to add something from your kitty bag? Well, I think Satish pretty much summarized the most important things. Only thing I would say is if you're going for an online exam, yeah. Uh, prepare, get everything set up a, a little while uh, earlier, log into the exam as early as you can, just so that you have the time to, I mean, if you have face any challenges related to connectivity or things like that, uh, you are prepared for that. Perfect. So see, basically I've kind of covered all the questions that I wanted to cover, but I've kind of, while the discussion was going on, I had, uh, I've kind of observed one important thing that everyone is saying like all three of you were saying is focus on learning focus on understanding right so it just came to my mind should we just then only focus on learning and not do the certification why should i actually invest in this certification if the emphasis is on learning Ranga, I'll, I'll take that question. I'll yeah. take that question. <laughs> okay, this is something which I really think about, right? So why do we need certifications at all, right? Uh, I think one uh, aspect of it is the job. Like, when, like today, there is so much shortage of cloud skills uh, that if I have a certification, you are already almost qualified for a job. That's how the situation is. And that's where this certification really helps, right? That's one. Uh, when you look at it, Let's say it's not really related to a job at all. And if you are just going to uh, a certification just for learning, I feel learning should have milestones, right? You need to have certain stages where you evaluate your learning. And that's where I feel this certification has a value, right? It's kind of a milestone. At least it's an indication that you know Google Cloud, at least in the view of Google Cloud, well, right? So in the view of Google Cloud, you have a good understanding of Google Cloud. That's a good uh, milestone kind of a thing, right? So for the role you are performing, it's a good thing. So I think those are the two important parts for me, right? So one is for the job, uh, like today, because of the shortage of skills. I mean, there's so much shortage of skills today with respect to the cloud uh, that a lot of times just the certification is able to get a job. Lot, I mean, it's not going to be, this kind of situation will not be persisting for a long time, but at least today, that's kind of the situation which is present. At least that's what I observe. Right. So what you're saying is basically, if you have the certification, this will help you in getting your foot into the door of the companies that you want to kind of get the job into. Um, right. Makes sense. Uh, GK, any thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I think uh, Ranga has covered it very well. So basically, um, like when I when I also do interviews, yeah, um, it's tough to get the right resumes, right? I mean, we I obviously check for the certification. So certification will shortlist your resume to the to the interview, for sure. And and certification only from the cloud service providers, not certification from some some websites <laughs> or from exactly. some universities. <laughs> Just yeah. to add to that, so don't waste your money or lacks on on getting into university and showing that certificate to a, your interviewer. So it, it doesn't work that way. Um, so if you have a certification, for sure it's going to help. And then it also gives confidence uh, for a person like I'm interviewing. I know that, okay, he has done a very tough certification like, you know, G Cloud, Google Cloud. So 
and then obviously the interview happens right but the most important thing i think we discussed this before is that enjoy the preparation of certification not just getting the certification itself so certification will not get you the job it only takes you to that uh, interview right that's the most important thing and also in india people do not i mean uh, because they have less confidence in the in the whole ecosystem some people they do not even consider certification to an extent there is there is still less margin uh, who do not think that certification is legit but i am telling you like if you are applying for uh, even a freelancing world or in us certifications are most important i mean without that it is very difficult uh, to get into uh, to an interview or even shortlisting shortlisting your uh, resume and the other point which ranga also said right um, certification gives you that structured way of learning um else like what will you learn like even you go to google cloud right you have to there is a there are like lot of services in aws or google cloud or, or azure so it gives you that structure where, wherever you want to go you want to go to prepare as or you want to prepare pca or machine learning you can go through the contents and it gives you a, a confidence like okay i prepared this one i'm very good in compute engine so i have to go to the next section so use that uh, like that and then obviously uh, it's like a gamification right once you get certification it, it increases your confidence and it helps you to do be- uh, prepare and it helps you to do better in the interview right no i agree with you certification definitely helps um satish do you have similar opinions or no pretty much similar see one of the things is of course what people say for themselves right for example i learned i became better i got a job right and that could be for various reasons also they might have got it for not only the certification but for additional things what we also need to look at it is from two other aspects one is from the employer's aspect right and numbers um that i i think it's already been published but i uh, therefore i don't want to take the actual numbers but there is a clear um uh, what do you call um there is a, a, a clear connection between companies who've got people who are certified and the kind of business they are bringing in for themselves right these are uh, there are been studies and statistics around this right um and i think google has published them uh, if not I'm, i'm not going to talk about the specific number but there is a clear correlation between those who are certified entering a, a company which has got a certain number of certified people are doing better on certain aspects right? mm-hmm. uh, so it really matters for the employer right that these people are certified a certification of course like gk said is no indication that this person is able to do their job well i mean it's not the only criteria it is is useful but it's not sufficient right you need to test them on other things on a personal basis one of the reasons why the certification is good is because it sets a challenge for you it's very easy when you are reading a book or taking a course saying that oh yeah, yeah i get that i get that i get that and then when you come into the real field you're like hey, wait what exactly did i learn what did i uh, you know what did i do over here so everybody is very confident unless they get hit in the face with a actual project that they need to implement right and before that a certification kind of challenges you to say do i actually understand it it's a reason why after studying a topic right the teacher asks a question back right so what did you get because when you're learning something you're like yeah i get it but you also you forget that there are three four other possible ways of doing this right and out of that which is the best way you don't know that and the certifications kind of expect you to understand this whole uh, holistic approach where you say here are five different options within that given the criteria here is what i should do right and it's a different approach to a more sedentary passive learning right where you're actually challenging yourself is one of the key elements of learning as such um, and that's one of the reasons why uh, apart from the job and company employer perspective right on a personal reason i like to do this right for example recently i started learning look ml and i was like mm-hmm. okay i understood it but when i go for the exam is a completely different beast right it and it forces me to think in ways that i would be dealing with a customer or a client or a, you know uh, in a training con- uh, in a training context sure sure so definitely what i hear is learning is our number one objective certification kind of helps you to get the foot in the door in terms of interviews get that advantage it helps the structure your learning kind of motivates you and challenges you uh, in terms of uh, doing this study and learning achieve your learning objectives in cloud perfect i think uh, we have pretty much covered everything and 
This video has everything for a learner to ace the ACE certification. So with that, I would like to wrap up this video and want to thank each of you for your valuable time and sharing your valuable inputs. Ranga, Shatish, GK, thank you so much. Cool, man. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.